Hello and welcome to Ligna TV on the subject of furniture production. Digitalization, networking, the Internet of Things. They are the top industry buzzwords here at Ligna 2017 as well, of course. And today we're talking to three users who I would like to welcome very warmly to the show. Here we have Michael Ober, he works in the field of technology at IKEA Industry. Theo Budde, he is a managing partner at FM Büromöbel. And Bernhard Dachsenberger, he is head of sales, marketing and HR at the Dachsenberger Schreinerei. And we're going to start off with you, Mr. Dachsenberger. To what extent do you think you have already arrived in the future? Or how far advanced is digitalization and networking in your company? Digitalization has taken root in our company. We're surely still at the beginning, if you take a look at what industry is doing. But we can't get around it. And it's very, very important that we tackle it and forge ahead and that we in the craft sector also generate some consistency, that we're networked. So you've taken the first steps and are going to follow them up. Mr. Bude, what's the score with you in office furniture production? Well, about four and a half years ago, we made the decision to modernize and to implement flow production. We had a vision and we put it into practice. The system has been up and running for one and a half years and we're very happy. You're happy so far, excellent. Mr. Ober, at IKEA you are probably also pretty advanced, or am I mistaken? Well, it depends. There are some areas that are of course more networked. But, strictly speaking, there are still a lot of areas where there is a lot of potential to make progress. Okay, so you still have room for improvement. Almost all exhibitors have brought something along on the subject of Industry 4.0. Obviously, we can't show everything here, but we have picked out three examples. We paid them a visit and made a few short films. And the first film is about the smart tools to be found at Lights in Oberkochen. Lights already presented the first tools with an electronic storage chip in 1993. That technology opened up completely new tool management possibilities and is more important today than ever before. Now, in the days of Industry 4.0, of course everybody is talking about this subject. Back then it was revolutionary. It's now been developed further. The tools now come with this information that enables the machine operators to use the machines without error. The smart tool carries the process-relevant information as a QR code or chip. That means geometries, zero points, feed rates and rotation speeds. That means the machine operator no longer has to enter all of these things. And so on the one hand we can of course rule out error sources, and on the other hand also optimally use the tool and at the end of the day the process. In the future, the tool will therefore no longer only be responsible for the quality of the workpiece to be processed. It will also be a central information medium for the efficient control of individual process steps and thus production overall with its increasing complexity. There are quite a few ideas behind Industry 4.0. Increased efficiency, cost reduction, more flexibility, to name but a few. Mr. Budde, tell me, what is the most important reason to integrate Industry 4.0? As a matter of fact, it was increased flexibility. More and more architects are looking for special products, things that have to be produced outside of the series catalogue. And that's why we made the decision for flow production, to gain this flexibility. To produce in batch size 1 and not produce any semi-finished products anymore. To only produce things that are going to leave the factory the same day. That was the goal. So we're really talking about customization. The focus is very much on the customer. That was your main motivation. Mr. Dachsenberger, you also have taken the first steps. What were your reasons? Our reason was to improve the production process, the production flow. Of course to save time in production and obviously to react more flexibly to the customer. Our strength in the craft, in carpentry, is of course to produce truly individual products for customers. Something new every day. 
Always, always batch size one, always creating something new. But with the new technology, with the operational consistency, of course we will get better and more effective. So for you we're talking about pretty much all of the reasons there are for Industry 4.0. Mr. Ober, what about IKEA? What's happening there? Why did you say that you're going to press ahead in that direction? You said before that you are not that far yet. How far are you now then? Well, we are of course at a stage where many factories are more or less integrated, system control and so on. But we also see that batch sizes are reducing in mass production as well. And there, particularly from the supply chain, completely new demands are made of us nowadays. And another great motivation is the availability of the systems. We really want to generate a customer benefit by producing more efficiently. And like we saw in the trailer just now, we're looking at process security that we can really say that the wastage rate has been brought down to a minimum. Okay, so wastage rate is an important subject for you and customization. What about predictive maintenance? Just looking around the panel here. Mr. Budde, you're nodding. Is that a major reason for you? An important one? Yes, that's also different to production in the past. We now produce everything on one line. And if we have malfunctions within the line, severe malfunctions, that can then lead to major downtime. And because we work in a three-shift system, we don't have much time for maintenance. So we also have to precisely plan maintenance work and make sure that we have free capacity. We need free capacity to carry out the maintenance work, otherwise things can go very pear-shaped. Unfortunately, we've had to learn from our mistakes there. So you save yourselves a lot of bother. Mr. Ober, you were nodding the whole time? Yeah, we're in a similar situation. And we can now see in a lot of places that there's a tendency towards condition-based, so towards checking the system status. But of course, what we have already seen in the first pilot projects with predictive maintenance is also very interesting for us, particularly because we're working with our systems worldwide. Networking is also of interest to Weinig in Tower Bischofsheim. We paid them a visit. There are hardly any clear boundaries between industry and craftsmanship anymore. Machines and systems are networked in both sectors. The manufacturer's task is to channel the data flow and make it user-friendly. Weinig places particular focus here on customer benefit. Bei uns heißt es Weinig. We call it Weinig 4.0 Ready, and it shows that all of our machines at the trade fair stand, and of course all of our machines in operation, are digitally networked. That means you can see exactly what is happening on our machines in the manufacturing network, what's happening, how efficient they are, and we will of course also present software solutions that support customers to make the right decisions. Efficient and resource-saving planning and production and intelligent maintenance are essential for networked production. Die Weinig App, wo man digitale Verbindung zu seiner Maschine hat, wo man zu Hause vom Wohnzimmer aus sehen kann, welche Verbindung man hat, wo man zu Hause vom Wohnzimmer aus sehen kann, welche Verbindung man hat, wo man zu Hause vom Wohnzimmer aus sehen kann, welche Verbindung man hat, wo man zu Hause vom Wohnzimmer aus sehen kann, welche Verbindung man hat, wo man zu Hause vom Wohnzimmer aus sehen kann, welche Verbindung man hat, wo man zu Hause vom Wohnzimmer aus sehen kann, welche Verbindung man hat, wo man zu Hause vom Wohnzimmer aus sehen kann, welche Verbindung man hat, wo man zu Hause vom Wohnzimmer aus sehen kann, welche Verbindung man hat, wo man zu Hause vom Wohnzimmer aus sehen kann, welche Verbindung man hat, wo man zu Hause vom Wohnzimmer aus sehen kann, welche Verbindung man hat, wo man zu Hause vom Wohnzimmer aus sehen kann, we can display preventative maintenance subjects. We can display preventative maintenance subjects. Because the benefit is in the increased lifetime and availability of the production technology. Industry 4.0 also brings many challenges. Mr. Budde, you've already put a lot of things into practice. What were the biggest challenges for you, namely in the beginning when you started tackling Industry 4.0 and digitalization? It all started with the vision. We expressed our expectations, our wishes, what we wanted to be implemented and the way we wanted it to be. Of course, that led to disagreements. The plant manufacturer told us that what we wanted wouldn't work. We told them that we wanted it anyway. That was a slow process which led to most of our expectations being met. That means that you needed to get everyone on board first. That's true, that was a challenge. 
Now everything is ready. The system is live, but Industry 4.0 does not only mean that your own systems work. It also means being connected to the suppliers and the customers. That's where we see the biggest challenges. And that's where we expect real difficulties in the future. To be completely honest, there are suppliers and customers with whom that works, but unfortunately that's not the case for all of them. There's still a long way to go to get these suppliers and customers on board, because Industry 4.0 is not an isolated solution. It needs a working process chain. So what do the customers worry about? What are their questions? What are their objections? Well, concerning customers, we would like to provide them with a tool that allows them to enter their orders into the system themselves. Then, of course, the customer's worries are, if I make a mistake now, then it's my mistake as a customer. And we still want you to do a plausibility check. The customers just don't want to take the responsibility. That's their opinion. Concerning suppliers, of course there are some we really like cooperating with, because their products meet our expectations. But unfortunately, they're not up to date with their technology yet, and that's where the problem lies. That probably also concerns machine language. Mr. Ober, does IKEA see other issues or do you face similar challenges? Our challenges are similar, but we also see the new opportunities that come with it. Namely, exactly what was mentioned, moving away from isolated solutions and towards increasing interconnection. What we can also see here is that the industry is starting to agree on certain standard components all over the sector. And that's the key factor. How will we eventually succeed in connecting all the components with each other? That means that you need certain standard components in order for it to work. I would call it speaking the same language if I understood correctly. That seems to be the case at the moment. Another challenge that is crucial to us is data security and internet security in general. Because, of course, when I start to connect the machines to the internet, I face the same problems that I always have on the internet. And that is exactly what we're seeing now. So security is a very important topic for you too. Is that also true for you, Mr. Budden? Yes. You install firewalls to protect yourself against attacks. But just last week, we saw what can happen. We were also concerned. And of course, we sensitize our IT staff and all users in general about viruses, about Trojans and so on. Mr. Daxenberger, do you think that Industry 4.0 will become important for carpentries in the future? Or will they say, well, that doesn't affect us, we don't need it? Well, it will concern all carpenters. It's a really important topic. We face other issues. The end customer doesn't want us to be 4.0. The end customer simply wants an individual carpenter. Individual solutions. That's a completely different topic. But of course, data security is also an extremely important topic for us, on-site, in the customers' bedrooms. With WhatsApp and everything, but we also need to keep up in production. We need to work constantly. We simply succeeded in getting a partner on board who supports us, who really puts into practice what he promises. But we're part of a group. Of course, we're riding the blue wave, but we're quite happy about that. There are many good providers, but consistency is a very, very important topic for us in crafts. And of course, it is simpler than in the industrial sector, because it's not our day-to-day -day business. Especially because we don't do it with specialists, but with carpenters and technicians. And what's your experience? Is it important for carpenters or not? Basically, every carpenter has to deal with it. It depends on the size of the carpentry. A typical German carpentry only has five employees, which makes it kind of an issue. But as of 10, 15 or 20 people, you can start introducing processes. I think that topic is really fundamental to survival. And what's really fundamental are individual products, because that's something that industrial production can't deliver. However, we have great opportunities to manufacture something new every day, which is more difficult in industrial production. Let's watch a short film we recorded about that question at Homark. The global digital platform, Tapio, unites digital products for the entire wood industry with thousands of production machines and the varied range of materials and tools in an Internet of Things platform.
Under the name Tapio, under the name Tapio, we have developed a digital platform for the woodworking industry, which makes the benefits of networked machines and the Internet of Things accessible to our customers. Transparency is very important to our customers, and we are transparently leading the entire woodworking industry into the future. Digital wood works. Digital wood works. The Tapio digital platform generates intelligence from the vast amounts of data, which woodworking companies can profit from by securing investments for the future. The benefits are dramatic, increased productivity, production efficiency and much greater transparency, and all of that online. Tapio is open for various software solutions and different machines, and therefore also for other manufacturers' products. So, that brings us to our last question. You are here at Ligna as users, as customers. But many machine producers also watch this show. What would you like to have from the machine producers? And I'll start with you, Mr. Ober. Well, as I already mentioned before, standards. What's true for the three of us is it needs to be possible to make machine data available. That's one thing. The other is use of data. Simply connecting to the Internet is one thing. But finding solutions is another. Solutions to make use of it, predictive maintenance, process control, things like that. I think that's what we need to put the focus on here. So, your greatest wish would be to do more with data and data use, Mr. Budin? Yes, it's similar with us. But for us, system availability plays the biggest role. We need planning accuracy. Our customers want to rely on us. We have to deliver on the dot. Office furniture is a hot potato. They always have to be finished with everything shortly before the building is opened. And system availability can only be guaranteed with outstanding service and that would be my wish of the system builders and manufacturers to further expand that segment, the service segment. Finding a solution within eight hours or so is not good enough. If the system grinds to a halt, it needs to be going again immediately. Of course, we have to invest in training. We already invest a lot in our own interest and we're going to send a colleague to EMA to be trained directly by EMA, because we use purely EMA production. And so, naturally, we want to build up our own know-how, but we also hope that EMA will improve their service. So your biggest wish, more service. Mr. Daxenberger, what is your biggest wish? Our biggest wish, well, we're very, very happy with the service from HOMAG, as craftsmen. But we have the problem that they are very industry-based and are extremely expensive for us. That's a simple fact. We don't have any large-scale maintenance plans. For us, it's okay if a machine is down for half a day, obviously not three days. But I have to say, they have to make sure that they provide particularly small craft businesses with craft know-how, with craft skills, at craft prices. It's a huge subject that we're always battling with, not just me, but my colleagues from the Guild and the Association too especially with the big-name machine manufacturers. So you would like good value for money. On that note, thank you to all of you. I truly enjoyed that. A brilliant discussion. Thank you for watching. Take care and see you soon.